This tradition continued through the S and T series models, right up to the final Mulsanne built under Vickers' ownership. In fact, the first post-war car to emerge from crew with a body supplied by Bentley, and not a coach builder, was the Mark V, a saloon that morphed into the R-Type, which in turn spawned a two-door version of the Continental. The Continental GT may have kick-started Bentley's reformation in familiar two-door sporting format, but its four-door sibling was rightly considered essential to establishing Bentley as VW's luxury division, and as a credible volume rival to its former bedfellow, Rolls-Royce. Nevertheless, the car was not meant as a limousine. Its engineers remained preoccupied with the idea that a Bentley was bought to be driven, not driven in. But buyers in the U.S. stash and now, more importantly, China, disagreed and made the Flying Spur the best-selling four-door Bentley ever without straying from the back seat. It is chiefly their input and needs that have been addressed with the new model, a car that no longer requires, or warrants, a badge tie-up with the still-related Continental. It is now a substantial event in its own right. But has the change in approach rendered the new flying spur a damn squib in its still sizable home market? We give the driver the week off to find out.